Tonight on The Readout. I was in the vicinity of a conversation where I overheard the president say something to the effect of, you know, I, I don't effing care that they have weapons. They're not here to hurt me. Take the effing mags away. Let my people in. They can march to the Capitol from here. Stunning testimony that Donald Trump not only knew that January 6th was likely to turn violent and did nothing to stop it, he fully intended to lead his armed MAGA mob into the Capitol. To paraphrase our esteemed NBC presidential historian Michael Beschloss, never before have we heard testimony this shocking about a president of the United States. And we begin tonight with Donald Trump's determination to personally lead the insurrection at the Capitol on January 6th to hang on to power, no matter the cost. This is what was revealed in bombshell testimony by Cassidy Hutchinson, a former top aide to Trump chief of staff Mark Meadows. It was made clear that Trump knew the dangers that existed on the day of the insurrection. Hutchinson testified that she heard the names of the extremist groups, the Oath Keepers, and the Proud Boys brought up during planning meetings for the January 6th rally, quote, when Mr. Giuliani would be around. And she said the Justice Department's National Security Division warned that some MAGA supporters were going to try to, quote, occupy federal buildings and invade the Capitol building. Most alarming, Trump was made aware the very morning of January 6th that many of those at his rally were carrying an array of dangerous weapons. I remember Tony mentioning knives, guns in the form of pistols and rifles, um, bear spray, body armor, spears and flagpoles. And despite having all that information, Trump took to the stage on the ellipse and directed his armed, enraged, and dangerous supporters to join him at the Capitol to fight for him. We're going to have to fight much harder. And after this, we're going to walk down, and I'll be there with you, and we're going to walk down to the Capitol. And we're going to cheer on our brave senators and congressmen and women. And we're probably not going to be cheering so much for some of them. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. Now, it wasn't completely clear until today that he meant it, not as hyperbole or as a rhetorical flourish, but as the plan. He was actually planning to go with them to the Capitol that day and possibly make some grand dramatic presentation either outside the Capitol or even inside the House chamber, Mussolini style even though he was told by practically everyone in the White House that it was a dangerous idea. Hutchinson testified about the repeated warnings from White House counsel Pat Cipollone, including on the morning of January 6th, not to join the MAGA mob. Mr. Cipollone said something to the effect of, please make sure we don't go up to the Capitol, Cassidy. Keep in touch with me. We're going to get charged with every crime imaginable if we make that movement happen. The potential legal jeopardy would not deter Trump in what he thought was going to be his moment of glory. After he finished his speech and was brought back to his motorcade, he was informed that he, in fact, was headed back to the White House and not to the Capitol. That's when Trump literally tried to take the matter into his own hands. The president said something to the effect of, I'm the effing president. Take me up to the Capitol now. To which Bobby responded, sir, we have to go back to the West Wing. The president reached up towards the front of the vehicle to grab at the steering wheel. Mr. Engel grabbed his arm, said, sir, you need to take your hand off the steering wheel. We're going back to the West Wing. We're not going to the Capitol. Mr. Trump then used his free hand to lunge towards Bobby Engel. And Mr. when Mr. Renato had recounted this story to me, he had motioned towards his clavicles. Now, this is where I confess that I cannot recall ever having heard another example of a president trying to physically hijack his own motorcade. I mean, of you as anyone. But you have to remember, this day was long in the making, and Trump wanted to savor every moment. It was Trump himself who had invited everyone to Washington the previous December, saying it was going to be wild. We've already heard from Trump's former White House advisor, Steve Bannon, making clear that what was to come on the day, be what was to come on the day before January 6th. All hell is going to break loose tomorrow. 
just understand this. All hell is going to break loose tomorrow. It's going to be moving. It's going to be quick. All hell is going to break loose. And today we learned that Trump's intention to be at the Capitol was not some spur of the moment decision. Hutchinson described a conversation she had with Rudy Giuliani on January 2nd. As Mr. Giuliani and I were walking to his vehicles that evening, he looked at me and said something to the effect of, Cass, are you excited for the 6th? It's, it's going to be a great day. We're going to the Capitol. It's going to be great. The president's going to be there. He's going to look powerful. He's, he's going to be with the members. He's going to be with the senators. Talk to the chief about it. Talk to the chief about it. He knows about it. And when she relayed that conversation to her now former boss, Mark Meadows seemed to know what lay ahead on January 6th. He didn't look up from his phone and said something to the effect of, there's a lot going on, Cass, but I don't know. Things might get real, real bad on January 6th. Joining me now, a member of the January 6th Select Committee, Congressman Jamie Raskin of Maryland. Congressman, thank you for being here. Um, I think this hearing was as promised. It was as dramatic as promised. Uh, but I want to walk through a couple of things. Um, one of the things that this made me want to, one of the people this hearing made me want to hear from, um, and Liz Cheney has said it over and over, is Pat Cipollone. Um, he is someone who seemed to be at the center of much of this, seemed to be in the room along with Ms. Hutchinson for much of this, and also on the right side of, of, of history here in saying, do not do any of this. What is the progress of the committee of getting Pat Cipollone to testify? Well, the committee's obviously very interested in hearing from uh, Mr. Cipollone, and I... Uh, can't make any report about the, the details of any negotiations that may or may not be taking place. Um, but I will say that today was indeed um, a, a huge breakthrough in terms of our understanding of events, because uh, Cassidy Hutchinson, who displayed a lot of courage and a lot of character coming before the committee today, uh, demolished any pretense that uh, the savage mob violence that came out of that crowd and that uh, eventuated in the storming of the Capitol somehow took uh, Donald Trump by surprise. I mean, he was perfectly aware that there were weapons out in that crowd and, according to her testimony, wanted to take down the mags, in other words, remove the metal detectors so the armed people could mix in with everybody else. Uh, in preparation for the march uh, up to the Capitol. And let me play, this is um, Cassie Hutchinson talking about a conversation between her then boss, Mark Meadows, and Pat Cipollone about Trump literally not wanting to stop the violence. I remember Pat saying to him something to the effect of, the rioters have gotten to the Capitol, Mark. We need to go down and see the president now. And Mark looked up at him and said, he doesn't want to do anything, Pat. And Pat said something to the effect of, and very clearly had said this to Mark, something to the effect of, Mark, something needs to be done or people are going to die and the blood's going to be on your effing hands. This is getting out of control. I'm going down there. You know, when you combine this testimony that Trump did not want the violence to stop, what you just said, that Trump heard that people were going through the magnetometers and people were catching knives and guns and other weapons, and that he insisted that the mags be taken away, that armed people be let in, and then his determination to, number one, allow those armed people to march to the Capitol, his seeming presupposition that they were going to go to the Capitol, and then his decision, his determination to also go to the Capitol and maybe do some dramatic presentation, maybe inside of the House chamber, is the contention at this point. I mean, I feel like you guys have gotten a lot further to connecting Donald Trump to the seditious conspiracy charges that we've seen against those armed people, at least the leaders of those two armed groups, the three groups, the three percenters and the Oath Keepers, uh, I mean, the three percenters and the Proud Boys. Is that the contention here, that Donald Trump knew that three percenters and Oath Keepers and Proud Boys specifically were going to try to occupy the House and that that was his plan? Well, nothing was advanced like that in the evidence today about those specific, about his knowledge of those specific groups. Um, but Hutchinson testified that um, 
for Donald Trump, it made no difference that these individuals were armed. He said, they're not going to harm me. They're not there to hurt him. So that was the key consideration. They were on his side, and he had no problem with them uh, blending into the rally and then being part of the march that he so desperately wanted to go on himself. And, of course, you know, his speech was all about, like, we're going to fight like hell. Uh, otherwise, you know, you're not going to have a country anymore. And uh, there are very different rules when there's fraud involved and so on. Um, so, the, you know, there's a series of admonitions to the crowd to go and fight. And that was, you know, what was on his mind. And, the, you know, we, of course, have known that he didn't do anything to try to stop the crowd. But here we see him uh, actively trying to uh, cheer it on. And according to Hutchinson, um, you know, being disappointed that uh, armed individuals are being kept out of the crowd, at least momentarily, by the metal detectors.